barely got anything because I'm just not that observant. Oh, I got no. time. I ro- <laughs> <laughs> Captain's Pod, Stardate 230322.5. Hello and welcome aboard the Starship Enterprise, and thank you for joining us as we take a brief shore leave from the world of cinema sins to explore the universe of Star Trek. I am still surprisingly your Captain Ian Whittington, and she's back. It's Ambassador Danae Hughes. Also surprising. Yeah, um, it, I'm amazed that you managed to get out of the brig. I'm slightly concerned, but I'm trying not to show my hand too I much. I have my connection. Because mm. so. when you beamed, you thought you were beaming off the ship, but I, I actually really just beamed you to the brig. Such a dick. Yeah, but it wasn't even the brig on this ship. It was no. the brig on another ship. That was heading to another galaxy. Which, by the way, their brig is super nice. Like Fuck I had, that brig. <laughs> I had like a chaise lounge. What? There were like beverages. I told them to give you the crappy one. Daily foot massages. Daily. Th- mm-hmm. Why did I beam? Did I beam you to Ricer accidentally? They plated my hair. It was Aww, fantastic. What? This is my new. This is my new garb. What do you uh-huh. think? It's it's very Picard Grecian. season five. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very. Crushed velvet. Um, uh-huh. The tassels are a choice. Well, you know, that's how they dress. So I'm going to remove those later. I, I am very familiar with this species and they have never dressed like that. This is just for you. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we are back slightly sooner than we expected because we just couldn't stay away from Picard. Um, and Ian forgot how quickly Picard season two <laughs> was happening, in all honesty. But, that, that was part of it. <laughs> uh huh. So but this, here we are. Um, and this week we we're going we're going to be doing our usual prediction sinning debrief of season two episode one of picard the title of which i can't remember and don't know which sums up how excited i am to be to be doing season two so yeah this will be different it'll be totally different so and that's what's different about this um this series will be i don't know what's happening either this is going to be immediate in the moment i'm still ready for my predictions to be wrong (laughs) (laughs) me too me too nope danae's gonna i'm i kind of don't want to watch episode one with you because you're gonna spoil the finale for me (laughs) There's a very strong possibility that you will spoil the finale. I mean, yeah, that's part of the fun of what we're doing together is deconstructing each you know, episode. And this is going to feel so different for me because I'm used to being able to like, you know what's going to happen. So you're mm-hmm. just sort of almost just like watching you wait yeah, for your reaction. This is going to be more like. I'm going to rely on you for information Mm -hmm. that I might not know. Like if a hue shows up, for example, and I've I've missed a reference, that's Mm -hmm. going to be helpful. But you have no idea where it's going. I have no idea. So my my buddy Sean texted me. So I'm I'm in America right now. So me and I are actually recording together, um, which is always an extra level of chaos and editing. You're welcome. But but Sean texted me this morning. um, He's six hours behind us. So he's already seen the episode. And I just had a very nice message from him saying, Stay away from the internet. Watch Picard now. So I was already excited, but now just that's. Mm, 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 Listen, mm, let's just put it this happens. way: the original plan was for us to record Picard later in the day, but Ian is so excited <laughs> that we are recording it as soon as yes, we possibly can. Right now, I had we had to get breakfast, but I was like, "But do, do we have to eat? Do, do we actually need sustenance? Can we not just survive off Picard's charisma?" You are literally. Wiggling. wiggling in your seat you're so excited so this is fun for me because i get to watch like the fanboy freak oh, out man. which is ex- which is exciting so excited so for so today excited. we're going to what talk about our predictions for this first episode before we start or are we just going to go watch it um we'll do a little quick prediction thing and then jump straight into it um because okay. I, I don't know that i have much we know that q is going to be there but we don't know when we don't know when we know that he changes the past somehow we don't know how but we don't know how I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I think they go back in time and Picard has to fix something. So, but... so let's start here. So when the show last left off, it was our crew, like just zooming off into the distance, sort mm-hmm. of like the hero crew that they are now or whatever. And we have no idea where they're going. So we assume that Rafi and Rios and um, Murderer Girl <coughs> and other murder Agnes. lady. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> Soji? Who's the other murderer? <laughs> There's so many, actually, all when murderers. you think about uh-huh. it. So, um, Agnes, Soji, uh, Seven. Yeah. And that's it, right? right. That's the whole crew. Oh, Uh-oh. Elnor. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair. Oh, no. You are not wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let's give him an episode and then nothing. <laughs> we didn't mention Picard either, right? So. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I'm guessing he's there. Oh, but God. Eleanor's like, I'm, I'm here too. Please choose to live. I wonder how they're going to use Eleanor this season. It can't season. be any less, can it? Do you think they're going to pick up on like the fans' reaction? to like? Did the fans react like we did? Where Not it's a like, huge okay, amount. Okay. Like, they love Eleanor. Like, there okay. is so much love for him. I don't think there was the acute observation we had that was like, oh, he's here. What do we do with him? Mm-hmm. But the the Coat Melat have turned up a lot in Discovery, so they have a big oh, arc. Oh, okay, okay. So they are committed to this brand of the Romulans. Okay. So they will they will make an appearance. So in fact, one of the episodes of Discovery is called Choose to Live. So they 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 go deep into that. Oh, stuff. that's cool. So we're probably going to be seeing some more Elnor, mm-hmm. and they're yeah. going to likely set the stage for the relationships. Right? That's what they should do. That's what in they episode sh- one. They should give us a. A, a visual example communication experience some sort of like conversation about how they're all getting along mm-hmm. we've got picard who is in an aging golem without mm-hmm. any immediate issues that mm-hmm. we know about but he's able to healthy, die oh yeah healthy live another as can 30 be. years we guess if they didn't take agnes to prison first then i think i'll be a little disappointed well i think this is one of the reasons they're doing the queue mess with things because they don't have to deal with the aftermath of last season <laughs> at all because no. this is you're picking them up and putting them somewhere different so what i'm hoping for is some of the ghosts from picard's past are dealt with and this is a great opportunity to tie up some loose ends what so, do you mean ghosts so i i want to know what happened to beverly i want to know oh, I see. why they didn't get married why they aren't together what not necessarily married but why they, they didn't were gonna get married well <gasps> there was always that they were so through cute. Run, that yeah. they were in love, and Picard has loved her since they first set eyes on each other, and really? it just it never happened. Oh my god, I never. didn't know that no. was for real. That's I thought real. it was there's, just me. There's two episodes where they literally flirt with it, and Beverly's mm. basically like, "No, <gasps> I want to, but this is a bad idea." Beverly, Beverly. I mean, a way to keep it together. Hey. I mean, you're not wrong. Mm-hmm. He is captain. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. So you want to know about Beverly? What else? So I want to know what happened. Not necessarily that they end up together, but I just want to know happened? where that went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go back and um, pick at that wound. <laughs> that's yeah that that's me um our data is fine i want to know where wharf is uh, and i think he too. will turn up geordie i want to see geordie oh, i want to see geordie so bad that has to be done doesn't it um i, I don't know Let, I, you, so when you say gah! ghosts you mean you want to see tng people coming back in of course i do okay, but okay there's also like stuff from just stuff about picard's past so the stuff that he regrets and the the some of the decisions he's made like aboard his first command there's some dodgy stuff that happened oh i see i want to know about that i don't you feel like though in season one they just hit so hard on the head that picard was like not the captain that we thought he was because he made mistakes that i kind of mm-hmm. don't want to see that through season two. Oh, i totally get that but that was more about this one specific event and, and, and you and that he had just no hit everyone, uh, of, every one of them yeah because <laughs> that was an event that was kind of out of his control I want him taken to task for the stuff that was in his control. Okay, I see what you mean. Um, okay, that makes Q sense. And Q is a bastard for doing that. He's like, you think that you're humans and you're doing great and all of this stuff. Here's how shitty you are and here's why. So the most interesting thing I'm looking forward to is how they handle Q. Has Q changed? Why is he back in the picture? Has he grown? Is he still a dick? Yeah. Are you ready it's to go find out? It's going to be a fine line to balance. Um, Let's go find out. I'm it. super excited to watch this. Are you ready? With that, we will see you guys for a full debrief in 10 forward after we have watched Episode one of season two. Two to be out. Welcome to Ten Forward, the part of the show where we grab a drink from the replicator and share our immediate thoughts and feelings on the episode. We just watched a get Tell me your drink quick so we can get into talking. Tea. I'm drinking. Good, whole you're drinking tea. tea. Fantastic. Um, what about and, you? And the the, the coffee, coffee. Um, <laughs> Picard and the rest of La Serena have settled into a new role, but are thrust together by a tear in the fabric of space and time that has a message specifically addressed to Picard asking for help. <gasps> yes. We have just watched episode one of season two, and my... What did you think, Ambassador? Wow, no. I really feel like this is your <gasps> moment, Ian. <laughs> it was incredible. Um, I have one big, big resistance, but other than that, I loved it. I adored it. If this is how season one had opened, I would have been absolutely fine. Even not knowing who Rios was, Agnes, all yeah, of that, yeah. this would have been a fantastic open to season one, too. It, it, it it's it's like and you shouldn't always listen to fans but it's like the writers listened to everything the fans 
said and did it and just gave us i just i feel like this is going to be such a good send off for picard and that era and it was perfect i will probably rewatch bits of that episode a million times and that's the end of the show everybody and that's it that's it we'll see you next week <laughs> no i was really engaged with it i thought i think it's interesting because we were talking about <laughs> uh-huh. we were talking about uh watching old tng episodes mm-hmm. and that we watched one where the enterprise mm-hmm. explodes mm-hmm. which is in this what episode this one so it was very like it, it, it was an odd yeah mm-hmm. i thought the same thing when um when when that happened i was like oh oh shit yeah it's a way to capture attention and of course you know that it's gonna be undone like oh. there's n- there's no way that we're going to be starting the season with a completely new cast and that was actually oh. the end of picard so I, right okay you know. sorry i so i thought you meant by the end of the season it'll be un- be undone it might not be. I think there's a chance it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see, obviously. We will see. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this was overall, uh, I had a really good time. I felt like it was really heavy handed in the relationship angle. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like how in season one, it was really heavy handed with all the Romulans and data uh, and, um, and synth life stuff. Like they mm. were really just pressing down our throats, this whole like narrative of these all these new things they're going to be talking about this one it was mostly just like hey if you want to know what this season's about it's all about relationships it was it was extremely clear in its message that this will be about exploring picard's ghosts of his past and the the roads not taken and the love interest and stuff so just we're not in the predictions yet but fucking nailed it <laughs> yes! yes finally i got, got a prediction yes! right <laughs> um well let's start with um it, it, it opens in kind of a pretty standard this is how you open an episode of tv with action and explosions we get a clearly updated um 2300s ship so it looks yeah. like the internal of the enterprise but much more updated and People are getting shot. There's explosions. Of course, there's an auto destruct. It was um, crazy. It was intense. Wasn't it? I thought it was such an interesting choice to start with, like just the crew members that are on a different part of the ship grabbing their weapons, mm. getting into the lift, and then going to the bridge. Just the intensity that they were feeling before the door opens, mm. and then being able to later on in the show show what had happened before they got there. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of like waiting for their arrival because that was how the show started. That's the cue of like, yeah. uh, uh, wow, <laughs> play a little roll. <laughs> but it was a really interesting way to open, and mm. I really loved it. There was like that moment where it's the shot of I think was it the Vulcan that had like the mm-hmm. blood coming down his mm-hmm. face, and it's just this odd angle close up of his face, just like the trauma of oh my god, this door is going to open and I'm going to mm-hmm. be in the middle of a firefight. That was a beautiful moment because it was all explosions and fighting and then silence in the turbo lift. Yeah. Collect the yourselves turbo lift, that's and then called. boom, explosion. Yeah, it was really, that That was such a cool thing. And then there's like these sounders in the background, like the whoop, announcements of whoop. like something happening on level five and a warp core mm. thing. And then like just this subtle thing, like she's gaining access is all you hear. And I wrote down the queen. Like <laughs> in really big. Back <laughs> life for the queen. And right then is kind of when we go to the just the new introduction of the show. So it was just like this yeah. punch. Boom. And then you're there. Mm-hmm. As a rule, I don't like the explosion disaster 48 hours earlier because you do spend the entire episode waiting to yes. get there. But And they spent the last fucking season doing that. Yeah, uh-huh. Which is why I have in resistance is <laughs> futile. Okay, okay, okay. But it works <laughs> here because I I I it's an episode of Star Trek. I'm I'm happy. I know we're going to get there. I trust them that you you have to open the season really punchy. Um, you do. So straight into the opening credits, which I was like ready with a with like a thesaurus, a reference book, notepads, because I was like, this is where Danae got all of her information. Yeah, this is a it. lot in there, and I barely got anything because I'm just not that observant. Oh, I got no. time. I re- <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, actually, I, right before we go on, you said uh-huh. something at the very beginning of the show because you saw the title of the show was Stargazer. Mm, and the Stargazer. You yeah. said, hmm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. And my question is why? So two reasons. So the Stargazer is Captain Picard's first, first ship, ship, which he tells us. You knew about out. before they started? Which is which is awesome because okay. we all, 
if you've seen every episode of TNG, like you bloody nerd, yeah, you you know that. That's part of Picard's okay. history. Um, I'm glad the way they delivered it here and they still kept people like you in the loop as well to know that that was his yeah, first by command. by the end, we knew. By the end, exactly. Yeah. So that's that was his... This is an updated version. It's not just... Um, right. It's that class of ship and they've built a new one and renamed oh, it. I know we're going to be going scene by scene here, but I'm also really excited to talk about the ship when it comes. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, the introduction. The, the other interesting thing is that the Stargazer is one oh. word. And the title for this is the Star Space Gazer. So it's two uh, words. So it is Picard is the Stargazer. And this is about the Stargazer. Yeah, okay. yeah. Which I, I, that was, that was nice. That was a pretty perfect yeah. title for the first episode. I liked that. Cool. Um, oh, literally, my notes for the opening credits were well, this is a lot darker. I like the music, <laughs> time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Give okay, we've got the same eye theme, but now we're in a glass house and there's something below the earth. The foundation of the show being something about, oh, this is a Borg. This is a hive. Is the queen going to be involved? Oh, this introduction has been beefed up. We've got some new music and it is more fast paced now. Mm -hmm. There's a circular orbit of the Borg Eye. We're now entering like a mechanical cylinder and we're going into space, flying across these very interesting sound waves. But does this represent time? Oh, that's an interesting shape. What is that? (laughs) Oh, it's turned into an hourglass. Hourglass means time. Wow. Holy shit. I am good at this. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Yep. 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 Um, I think with the the thing that I got caught up on the most was the music because the music rarely changes in Star Trek and it's usually as a result of fan backlash. So the Enterprise theme was sped up because people thought it was too miserable. The DS9 theme was had extra bits added to it because people thought it was miserable. But this felt very deliberate. The the best time that I saw the theme music change was in Enterprise when they they did a series of four episodes which was set in an alternate universe and a similar sort of thing happened shenanigans Mm -hmm. in space and time and they're in a dark universe and they turned the theme like into a minor key and it Mm -hmm. was the opening credits were totally different pictures and this felt like that it's a much darker tone it's not as airy fairy it's much more kind of reflective of the universe that i think it's going to be in it was a similar music same music in a lot of ways and then it it picked up the pace and it Mm -hmm. did have a dark and you know dark aspect to it but there were so many similar themes you've got the glass shards that are sort of traveling through Mm. um now they're part of a glass house or a greenhouse um and then they have like this stuff painted on it that we i love that consistency but whoever is putting together these opening credits needs a medal it's so good yeah and it's really interesting when you saw the 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 ship kind of flung across the um so like the cylinder turns into these lines that turns into the lines of what i assumed was going to be something to do with like time delineation and then it went on its side and then it went into an hourglass shape and but I think it's the distress signal, the multiple voices of the Borg that is thrusting the Stargazer into Or it's them this. disrupting history with every move that they make. You mm-hmm. know, everywhere they go, things shift and change. Yeah. So I don't know. It was I really interesting. That. And I think that the introduction continued to be really... Like, I loved watching the introduction as last season developed. So I wonder if it'll mm-hmm. feel the same. I'm assuming it'll feel the same for us. In I, I think so, yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm getting back into the show. I loved how efficiently we were shown everyone in their new place and time. Yeah, it was a it was a catch up with everyone that you're curious about where and it, it kind of made sense. It's how I wish mm-hmm. that they would have started season 1 in a <laughs> yeah. way. However, with so much time having passed between Picard and like whatever happened previous, I mm. think it would be even more difficult to catch up whereas uh, here it's like right. a year and a half. So yeah. it's not like it's a huge amount of time although some people have died, I guess like the other uh, Romulan. Chaban yeah. or whatever? Um, Siobhan. 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 What happened to yeah. Siobhan? He passed away. We don't know. Why? He didn't die in season Tell one. Me. I know. I, it's probably old age or I something. do love seeing Picard in the orchard. There's something really, really cool about that. And the amount of energy that he had. And yeah, this is you one of those. his joy. It's just he's happy to be there. And he, he's there because he's choosing to be, not because he's been relegated to his chateau. And it's, <gasps> I think this season, oh, the dog. Yeah, when it opens up and he's Number like, one. he pops a grape into his yeah. mouth and he looks so happy, yeah, like yeah. genuinely, truly yeah. relaxed and happy. Mm-hmm. You can see it. He's not stiff. He's And I'm like, that's acting. He's mm. <laughs> That was amazing. And then it pans down to the top. <laughs> so I think this season and even that one episode redeemed so much of season one for yeah, me because yeah. he was deliberately being doddery and weary and tired and... I didn't realize I 
was finding it hard to separate that between Patrick Stewart being old and struggling mm-hmm. and Picard, but it is acting. Like is he acting. is acting um, yeah. really, really tired. And now he has so much energy. Just Patrick Stewart, man. Yeah, it was amazing. So good. It was also neat to see the technology, like how they're teleporting the grapes out yeah. of them, you know. Why would you pick, pick them by hand? Why would you? But then yeah. to see it actually happen and mm. like how they use the technology to put the label on and yeah. that was really cool. No, I love it. Yeah. That's the future. But then there's some things that <laughs> you can't, get around like i really felt like their teeth were red after they drank the wine and that's so relatable <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's hard to be romantic when you just got wine stains all over your face you just have to throw caution to the wind yeah about just it. enjoy it um so yeah agnes is um off with um soji doing diplomatic thing she seems to be on a diplomatic mission oh so we're skipping over the fact that picard and uh this we're gonna do I, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do oh, you're the reintroduction to, to the crew and okay. then we'll get into that because oh, that's mainly what i'll talk about in this instance but okay it's okay that's that's a, it's okay. fine i was just wondering because i was like we're gonna skip over the fact that they're like having nope. this like oh okay. no we'll get there we'll get there um yeah agnes and soji great a little bit of an introduction soji has i'm sorry uh agnes has been excused for her crime because she was mentally insane because of an alien wow I'm going to get away with some stuff. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Romulans made me do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it. I know they... I, I I almost wish she was in a prison cell because with this time disruption stuff, she could be anywhere. But I think she needs to be on the Stargazer for this to have worked. I think this is only affecting people on the Stargazer because we know the Bull Queen is going to be in this season and she's on the ship as well. So I... I predictions later. Sorry. Um... <laughs> You're, you're, you're okay. No, this is an exciting moment whenever you're like, I get to like predict to stuff because you're going to be going into these different places where you haven't mm-hmm. had a chance to play before. Mm-hmm. No, I think I agree with you. It, it And being introduced to everybody and seeing how they choose to introduce people and mm-hmm. give you a glimpse. I'm really surprised that Soji wasn't more immediately used. Like, yeah. I'm surprised that they left her behind. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. don't, I don't understand why why but maybe we'll it, it'll be explained later so uh elnor and soji not brought into no, the ship no you're right actually i'm wrong she so there's no reason for agnes to be on the ship so they could have left her in a prison cell but i think they just i don't think they wanted that conflict and no and it it, the, it was kind of a humorous moment where she's sort of like drunk and someone's trying to hit on her and she's just awkwardly batting them yeah. away and she's like i was cleared of murder due to an alien induced temporary temporary insanity mm-hmm. of murdering my ex-boyfriend yeah and yeah, so <laughs> you probably don't want any you don't want a slice of this right now you, yeah you don't you don't want that and so you're kind of like okay so that's how that worked in fact yeah. many times in this episode ian was like and that explains that you know <laughs> Which I kind of love, like I was sinning it in the moment, uh-huh. but I was like, you got to get there. And you have to I, do something. I, I don't know. I am on the record as saying that is how, that is what Q will do. So I don't know if it was in Captain's pod. It might have been on English Irish, but I literally said, this is exactly what will happen with Q. He will turn up looking like himself. They'll de-age him. He'll notice Picard is old and then snap his fingers and catch up. And I think that's the only way they could do it, to See, be honest. you're good at predicting future. The, the, the really See, obvious stuff. See, you're really good at it. It's fine. So, yeah. So, that's where... So, Soji stays behind on this planet to, like, mm-hmm. make nice with these people. To diplomat the Deltans. diplomatic things. Yeah. yeah. And Agnes beams back to the ship to mm-hmm. become a drunk genius and decode a wavelength. Some Thing. audio length. Yeah. Um, Rafi is back with starfleet yeah she um and she's so a commander elnor. she's back to being a first officer mm-hmm. elnor has just graduated from starfleet academy by the, the sounds first of it romulan. first romulan um so we are i think a few years removed and from season one we must be rios i think it's like a year and a half and rios has a ship now and rios has his own ship he's which captain. we're just completely skipping over how that happened seven has his old ship and Lacerina. has been doing her stuff because she was owed a ship like I think Picard it's, owed her a ship, and yeah, apparently a Rios that basically became Picard's just, ship yeah. by the end of the season. <laughs> You're it was like, not take wrong. everything. It's You're like, not wrong. Um, do I? <laughs> no. Okay, that's fine. Rios, I'll just sit down. Um, I love that they kept the same holograms as well. Yeah, that was really fun. So much fun. Yeah. Um, no, I I'm glad they didn't get bogged down with explaining how people got to where they got. It's we want to see Rios back in Starfleet. 
We want to see Rafi back in Starfleet. We want to see Picard back in Starfleet. This isn't going to be a seven season arc where we have to mm -hmm. get people to the right places. And no, they did, so they did Sh it. Shaban died 18 months ago, but I think more time than that has passed. Oh, since the previous? In yeah, in order for Elnor like to get back through That's true. the Academy, it must have been at least three or four years. But it's still pretty advanced in my yeah, mind to go through. It's pretty quick. You know, all of that. Mm. Yeah. I, I agree with you. And the little winks and nods. They also did this thing that I wanted to see in season one, which was to see Captain Picard or Admiral Picard. Mm -hmm. at Starfleet. Like he has the whole Starfleet when he's giving the speech to the graduating class. That's it. That's where we want him. He's got this great speech he's giving. He's, you know, flanked by all these officers with this beautiful setting with all of these students, you know, mm. looking up to him. And we got, I got that vibe that I was really wanting to see in season one. And it was gut wrenching to be like, what, what are we doing? Why are you ruining my captain? <laughs> Why are you beating him so hard? <laughs> so here he's kind of redeemed. And then also we get to see him do things that we wanted to see where he's walking onto a massive ship oh and goodness. people are standing aside in honor. It's because, that it's made because. me feel like, ah, uh, okay, now we're back like more comfortably where I wanted to be mm -hmm. in season one. Not that season one was bad. It just wasn't what I was, the fan Expecting. service that I wanted. Like season one, we decided it was the fan service for the end of data. Mm -hmm. That was the fan service yeah. for that. This is like, I feel like they're like, oh, this is the TNG fan service that we wanted. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> and I, I wonder how much of that is acknowledging that there was a lot of let's beat up Picard. Um, in season one. And mm -hmm. I, I just think that if they carry on this way, it's going to create a three season, 30 episode, really complete story mm -hmm. of Picard's fall from grace back to where he should be to an actual retirement. Um, Is there a season three? I just three? think it's gorgeous. Yeah. So season two oh, and that's three right, that's and right. that's it. They're finished. That's and it's right. People listening. Recording. I forgot. I forgot already. Cause yes, it's... I'm so great at predictions. <laughs> 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 okay. So happy with the introductions. Let's do it. So... Picard has a nice moment. Everything's kind of slowed down. We're into a, a bit of a rhythm. Picard has some nice wine with Laris. Danae, did you like that scene? <laughs> did it make sense to you? Did it was, it? was it cohesive or out of the fucking blue? Mm. I, I believed it um, mm -hmm. in some ways. Mm -hmm. I think that they did the justifications that they needed to do in the little bit of dialogue that they have between all of these characters to sort of give us just enough that we're like, okay, we have to kind of believe this. Yeah, I think that she has been caring for Picard. She's been in his life for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, her person is gone and she's ready to love again mm -hmm. and looking to Picard to have a very familiar relationship mm -hmm. shift into a different, you know, into a different area. And I think we see Picard think about it and hesitate. The thing that bothered me about that scene is that if you've got two adults that are at this stage of life, mm -hmm. do you really, would she really get up and walk away in frustration or would she sit there with her friend and be like, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. Let's just hang out and drink wine. Yeah. And it, it creates that relationship tension that I get bothered by because people end up thinking that that's normal behavior. And to me, it doesn't have to be normal behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, It doesn't, doesn't have to be the awkwardness. Th it doesn't. It doesn't have to be... Um, like something went wrong and so i have to walk away it, you know mm -hmm. her feelings are hurt maybe she was but how sh how could she not expect a little bit of rejection or resistance if this is the first time that they've talked about it had to be on the cards you know give the guy a minute to think about it and i also get bothered by the idea that we have to have love arcs because mm -hmm. some, there's something really beautiful i think i said this you know before we ended season 1 about a character that just is more comfortable being alone and mm -hmm. i don't think that we celebrate people who just want to be alone yeah. enough i think we always feel like a perfect story has to have two people or three people or four people or in this case <laughs> six or seven i yeah, mean there's huh? so many relationships mentioned in mm -hmm. this because they have to go back and touch on if it's okay to just mention it here yeah of course they touch on why seven and uh rafi you know they, they touch on that one yeah and they, they touch on, like, they just kind of go back Ruffy and they and shift Ag um, Damn it, Rios and Agnes. Rios and Agnes, yeah. So it's like how, they do like a quick check-in, you know, they forget to ask, you know, Soji how she feels about her ex-boyfriend and whatever happened to him. Nark. Like, what happened to Nark? I don't like, think we'll see Nark again. <laughs> I think that'll be it. Well, he needs to, he's somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I, if we don't go back to that planet and see that Borg cube taking over, I'm still going to be upset. You'll still be pissed. But anyhow, I just, they spent so much time almost justifying 
where the relationships are. Mm -hmm. But why do we have to care about that? You know, and that's what tells me that this really this season is about relationships mm -hmm. like they're they're going to do something with heart centric work and then his talk with Guinan, you know is a pretty Kinda on the nose yeah. yeah so no i don't disagree um i uh, and i think that's a reaction to how little of that there was in tng so you would have bottle episodes mm -hmm. where diana falls in love for an episode and it doesn't work out belevely 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 yep. belevely falls in lovely with a candle um and the closest you got <laughs> to consistency was riker and diana other than that, it was like, well, nope, was... we're on the ship and we will not interact in that way. No, there was also, um, there was also the one guy with the one girl and they had a baby. What? Come on, you, you know what I'm talking about. Do you mean O'Brien and Keiko who See? had a daughter? Oh, man, I don't know how I got there from that. <laughs> that was great. Amazing. Uh, no, you're right. That's the closest it got. Yeah, and even that felt very wooden. It didn't get very, it didn't get super deep until DS9, really. But I don't mind the lack of oh, relationship yeah. in things. And and yes, it complicates, it, you know, love and relationships complicate things because mm -hmm. you've got, you know, more emotions invo involved in it. But when you're a captain, like he, I think he said something like, um, uh, he said, a part of me really wants, uh, well, the part, of, the me part that of that wants... really wants is the part that has to wait in yes. line. Mm -hmm. And she says, what is it waiting behind? Yeah. And he says, duty and a need to keep on moving. Mm. So... The duty part, I think, is his work, and the need to keep on moving is referencing trauma. And mm -hmm. then we have this really odd moment where we're like seeing this horror flashback to his mother to being his childhood, some dragged thing? away yeah. and hurt, and, I think and that's there's the thing violence gonna, involved. I think that's the thing we're going to dig into more. Is that story that Gina knows is there because she's partially telepathic? That Picard and can also age herself at will. Just and uh. that's how that happened. Mm -hmm. Um, and there is a story that she knows Picard has been holding back. So I think that is the story that we will unearth as things continue. Sure. And I think that this alternate path is somehow linked to that decision that, or that thing that happened to Picard when he was younger. Um, because Q's done this before. He's taken Picard out of time and said, look, you've got a choice to make. Your path will end here if you... And basically, his heart gets his his mechanical heart gets shot, and it kills him. Um, and Q says, "Look, you can have you can prevent the accident that caused you to have a mechanical heart, and he's and you will live a much longer life." And he's like, "Okay, let's do it." But he becomes like an ensign and a science officer, and he never becomes a captain. So at the end of the episode, he's like, "No, Q, give me the fake heart, and if that's where I die, that's where I die." Um, and he, he doesn't die, obviously, but it teaches him the lesson that even the bad experiences made him the man he is. So I think Q is reteaching that lesson, but on a, on but, a much but bigger scale. But adding love. Well, that's the big thing that's missing, and I don't mean miss. Uh, and I don't mean missing <laughs> in the world. I mean miss what the writers think is missing from this character. Now I disagree as well. I don't think he necessarily needs it. Man, but he, he loves so deeply all the time, all the time. by protecting people mm -hmm. and keeping them safe, and decisions that he makes where he takes on the burden of really heavy decisions, so other mm -hmm. people don't have to. And he's always struggled with interpreting his own emotions and communicating mm -hmm. that to people. So, but I, I think in terms of the threads that are left to wrap up, as romantic and Hollywood as it might be, that is one to cling on to. It's, mm -hmm, well, ah! and it's <laughs> <laughs> oh god, um, and it's not, um, it's it's not a bad thing to explore yeah. relationships and no, the balance not. and how that works. He also said something like, um, he said that he. The last time, oh, I think it was when he was talking with Guinan. He said, "The ship has sailed, and I watched it go." Mm, that was interesting, and that's an active choice to watch it go, isn't it? I have, I, I don't know that it's a prediction, so I'll just say it now. But mm -hmm. when we were talking about the trailer and they had that little ship, remember that I caught on the imagery? Mm, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, I wonder if like there's actually like a ship, and he actually watched Beverly go. So, oh, I can imagine that completely. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, they're just they're mess they're really trying to press into the the heart of of like what would it mean for him to stop? What would it mean for him to slow down? And what would it mean for him to open up to love? Mm -hmm. And they may be setting up that um, what's her name? Uh, the Romulan, uh, Laris, Laris, that she's that person for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it would be really really beautiful if that is the person, and they don't mm -hmm. like do like a Beverly switch because I feel like they're setting up for like a Beverly drama. I think that'll be too cruel cool to Laris, and I'm not entirely sure. I think there's something there where they can't get Gates McFadden. 
to come back or else I think they would have put her in. But who knows? But with Laris, it's really like the way that she automatically knows the book that he's talking about. Like mm-hmm. I watched that happen with my grandparents. Yeah. That scene reminded me of my grandparents because my grandfather, he was a scholar and a theologian and he built libraries and he read all the time. And he was mm-hmm. just this, he was like a captain. He was like this, not actually captain, mm-hmm. although he did serve in the military. He was a, like this presence. Mm-hmm. And as he aged, his mind went and yeah. so my grandmother would like complete his sentences for him oh. and would instantly know what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. And he would just turn to her and she would say, oh, you're talking about such and such when this happened. And so when, being that in tune with somebody. Yeah. When Laris like turns around and just grabs this book, it's like she knew. Mm-hmm. And that's a really just a beautiful nod to relationship. Oh, it is. It really and is. And it was heartbreaking to watch her go out and go, oh, he's gone. You know, that and, was rough. He didn't yeah. even. This is one more time where it's like Picard, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but it sums it up, isn't it? Duty comes before Duty, man. love. And Something is in space. Can we talk about space now? Because I'm space. done We've talking done about relationships, relationships a little bit thing. But We're done. It, that, I am sure we'll like, come back to it. If you are sitting there and someone comes to you and says, there is this rip in space mm-hmm. that looks so badass, by the way. Oh, they are, they, they are killing shit. it with the graphics. Oh, my God. I was so pumped. Killing like, it. All the strings tearing open. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, my God. And somehow you get the depth that there is a star field there, but something deeper beneath something it. I don't deep. know it was so how cool. they do that in space. It helps that we're watching this on a massive TV. Massive freaking screen. <laughs> it's like, is it OLED or something? Oh, it's, the, it's about the best TV. Of course, it's uh, Dicers. It's the best TV like you can probably buy. Like a sound system. Yeah. We can fucking see the future it was gorgeous so if he's sitting there in his house and he knows that that's there mm-hmm. calling his name of course he's gonna be leave like i gotta go note, now though. leave a note but he'll leave just a voice put up, recording he'll, he'll put up for later. But did he but he didn't but it's, he's out of range leave the woman a damn note i can't believe i'm the one that's ended up defending <laughs> that scene because i, I didn't initially enjoy it i got shit to do uh-huh. you'll figure it out you'll figure it out don't forget to feed my flowers <laughs> <laughs> and water my dog. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Um, before we get into space. Uh, no, no, we did Guinan. So there was one excellent nod that, um, about where Guinan is. So the road that she's on is Forward Avenue and she's at number 10. So she's at number 10 Forward Avenue. It's gorgeous. It was so great. It was so great. I was trying to she like write down the name of that sign super quick because mm. I wondered if it was like a reference to something that I wouldn't understand. Mm. But then when they had the 10 and there was the four, I was like, oh, I get it. It's I know where forward. we are now. It's beautiful. <laughs> that was amazing. I loved it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah. So Picard's where we want him to be. Um, and yeah, so the Stargazer heads off um, to investigate this fab- this tear in the fabric of space and Ooh, time. Oh, my God. Um, a distress signal of some sort comes through specifically asking for Picard. Dude, okay. So, oh. like, the first time when we see this tear happen, so we had just watched Picard have this flashback to his childhood where he's mm, in the... Actually, no, we didn't touch on that. He's in this really. greenhouse again. He mm-hmm. finds, like, the broken pieces of glass and he's having these memories of his mother and this trauma, which we assume we're going to be Was revisiting Was it his again. mother? I think so. Because I remember she said that Paris is just a hop away, which means that he's not in Paris at the minute for some reason. And Paris is where he grew up. Sorry, Le Bar is where... Oh, right. So he is in Le Bar. I think that is his mother. So I think he wants to be in Paris... But he's being forced to live in the middle of buttfuck nowhere on this chateau in Le Bar, where he wants to be in Paris doing oh, Starfleet things okay. and with the hub. But and his brother was doing that or something. And um, his brother. He um, was, he, oh, his brother for some was. Reason. Yeah, and his dad. So the reason that is, is she says there's magic here. It's your place, yours and mine, our own world. Mm. Like the way she, the way that this female character, which we I assumed was the mother character, mm. sort of designed the way that the writers designed that it mm. definitely had that matronly feel like oh, definitely. where she was some kind of I a caretaker thought it was the mother or yeah a mother figure like mm-hmm. for some reason i thought it was a boarding school but it isn't i just we know so little about picard picard's mother him growing up we just know that he didn't get on with his dad and brother his dad and brother yeah were all about the wine and wanted to continue that okay, and so they, hated space travel and, and he liked it and he loved it and picard was the first picard since the solar system exploring Picard to go off and captain a ship and join Starfleet. She did also say my little Magellan slipping away. Yeah. So she definitely feels possessive of him somehow. Mm -hmm. And I think he said, are you still going to be fighting less here? Like Mm -hmm. as if he, if the mother figure and the father figure were fighting a lot. So Mm -hmm. whatever trauma we're about to see, I don't, I'm not looking forward to that, but let's talk about what happened right after, which is all of a sudden we kind of like, 
start to zoom out from that was perfect and it was like you're going through the solar system backwards mm-hmm. and then through like the all, galaxy, the galaxy and, oh. and then the rift happens so good. It was so cool. I was like, this is Star Trek. This is what yeah. I want to do. Ah, <laughs> gimme, gimme, so gimme, cool. gimme, gimme. Um and uh, yeah, so I there's this distress signal that comes through that Agnes has to um has to translate. When I saw multiple waves and the different languages all at once, I was mm-hmm. like, Yep, that's Borg. Because that's how the Borg communicate. Right, the reason they sound jarbled is because it's all of these different voices. Yeah, I knew that too um, instantly. And I was like, what's going to work? And the rift, is, the rift is green as well. I know that doesn't matter. But I was like, this is definitely Borg. But what was really interesting is that this, this distress signal is asking to join the Federation. And as soon as you find out that this fucking Borg diamond comes out of the rift, it's like, wow, is it, is it a trap or is it real? Do the Borg really want to join? Because it would be very Star Trek for that to happen. Like... The Romulans and the Klingons were the big bads of the original right. series, right? And the best, uh, the Klingons are best buds pretty much by TNG, and the Romulans are now somewhere in between. Mm-hmm. So it wouldn't surprise me, but I still don't know what decimated the Borg. I know. So that was one of the questions that I had, yeah. And it's a little resistance, and maybe a little bit, but then also is just trying to remember. So we had a conversation just real briefly in season one where we were talking about the Borg that they had acquired this type of technology that would allow them to you know like teleport really far away yeah 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 yeah. and i remember you saying that they had been basically pushed back to this other system but that they're still obviously assimilating cultures they're still doing their thing they're based in the delta quadrant which is where voyager went to so eighty thousand light years away so it takes about three to four years for a borg vessel to get to the federation so they've done they've only ever sent one or two cubes at a time They've never sent a full army. So they're still assimilating and expanding the Delta Quadrant and building their territory. But something, and we don't know what, and I don't know if they've forgotten, we don't know, but I trust this, I trust them enough to Maybe explain explore that and bit? to explore that. I don't know, because so, they did say something about it in this. I hope it's not that the depressed Romulan was assimilated and that wiped out oh, the board. Geez. Because oh. I thought it was just that one cube. If that then expanded to the entire collective, I have some issues. <laughs> yeah, so they and said... that might be it. They said, the Borg we know have been decimated and hobbled. That's that's the exactly. line from the show. And we don't know And how, I wrote down, I were think. they though? Because we talked about that in Picard. Yeah. But, so obviously, that maybe it's their perception is that they were hobbled somehow. Yeah. But just losing one ship isn't hobbled, but they did have Hugh. And last season, we talked about how interesting it is to see these ex- Exp- the XBs. XBs, like, yeah. as individual people. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they're gone, because they were still on that android planet. Some left on there, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they're there. And then, of course, you've got Seven and you've got Picard. And Se- uh, Seven is rightfully really concerned mm-hmm. that this is just, a like, an assimilation situation, which it oh, clearly of course. is. It, well, it may not be. Because- She's assimilating something. To do something. But she was stunning people. That was the key bit. Like, there's a reason that she was stunning them. And maybe she did just need a power transfer. And the the Borg are so direct. They're almost Mm -hmm. like the the Co-op Malat, like absolute Mm -hmm. candle. They just do. Do. like, we need some power. We can do this. So we're going to do it. There's no explanation needed. And I kind of... That's going to be... That's inefficient. That's a really great enemy. Mm -hmm. And I don't mind if they're going to be an entity that wants to have a say in this you know in the federation somehow i don't i don't mind if it looks like a trap but it's not a trap Mm -hmm. i think that the introduction of this queen character and all and this new kind of borg looking ship which Mm. we saw in the introduction that looked so badass oh it's so awesome it's Um, so cool i think it's very spider-like and you've got Mm -hmm. the queen at the center of the web sort of feel so it's it's much more like that than the cubes yeah and then so you've got this incredible tech you know you zoomed in on her helmet and all the ways that it was just shifting around just this is going to be really fun. Like I am here yeah. for it, mm-hmm. but I was confused. Like, wait, I thought that there was. I don't know. I thought they were further away, but maybe they figured out how to tear the fabric of space and time, and maybe they know how to get to these ships because the ships are using Borg technology, and so they're somehow linked. And that's an interesting decision that they made. Mm-hmm. They also kind of made their ships a little bit darker in tone. They're like oh, that, yeah, for sure, slate black and gray yeah. kind of tones. There's which, still some chrome to it, but. It's very, it's much more tactical and yeah. And I love that Picard not acknowledged it. Is that well, it's much more sleek than my Stargazer? <laughs> it's like I want my ship back. 
Um, <laughs> but no, I love that. That was a very deliberate nod that they've rebuilt the, the this new class of ship is using Borg technology. Yeah, that's a very deliberate nod. So I and I think that's probably why they picked on the Stargazer in particular. Um, but while we're on that, as soon as they realise it's the Borg, the fleet turns up for backup. And, it, oh, and Ian in the room yeah. loses his shit. Lose my shit. I'm like ripping off my my sleeve. I'm like, that's my ship. Because we finally see not a huge shot, but it is 100% the sovereign class. It may not be the Enterprise, but it is my my Enterprise. And it's my version of the ship. And I love it so much. And it was just, ah. Oh, you it guys, was just he great to see it on screen. He literally said, not screaming, no, not yelling, but very emphatically was like, I have that ship on my body. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and that is the first time we have seen it on screen on a TV show. Really? Only ever been in the movie. So we've seen Whoa. the inside of it. We've never seen it on screen on TV. And that has always killed me. I'm just like, you have the fucking specs. You have the technology. Make it happen. Um, it's beautiful. I love it. And the other nice thing that I found out by doing a quick bit of research is that there are four or five classes of ship from Star Trek Online mm. that they have made. So officially, Star Trek Online isn't canon. It has its own oh. stories, its own ships. But it's so nice. that, And a lot of those ships are designed by fans. So imagine That's seeing awesome. ships that you've designed now... Canon. They exist. They're canon and they're there. Oh, um, and I some love great that so much. ship shots. Like they oh, really got. They, they got, nailed it. And just when you thought that it was going to be like, okay, that's a really cool shot. Like, so the Borg ship shows up mm. and then there's this shot where like the, um, the fleet is sort of arriving mm -hmm. and zipping in. But then there's this shot of the Borg from inside the Borg ship where the, yes. it's doors are opening yeah. up unfolding and you have a really close-up shot of the variety of ships that are facing oh, off and that gorgeous. was such a gorgeous shot it's so great and you can see the excelsior update as well which we haven't seen since like kirk's movies it's um, incredible so to me that pretty. you saw all that so quickly like because oh, you know I could so think well about. yeah uh -huh. like th there were some that i didn't recognize and i was like well that's that's odd but that's fine the stargazer looks exactly the same what is that four in a cell i thought that was the interesting four in a cell things yeah, yeah those were pretty cool that is an episode we'll have to watch so you so there's an episode that's all about and picard thinks that the stargazer was destroyed mm -hmm. but it's actually brought back in one of the episodes so we'll watch that that's a very interesting four. one always has four in the cells it looks identical oh, so just cool. more chrome like they have been so faithful to that's so the, to the original design it's, yeah it's they gorgeous. have just enough like sweeping shots of ships where it's not mm. too much and it's just the opposite of the copy and paste fleet from the end of the season of uh, of season one which you um, still complain about which almost I still complain every about. time we talk I know, and you know at some point I you're know. gonna have to let it go I'm, but i'm but is I, this I, I your healing now. moment this is my healing moment because oh, it's just like we will put less ships on screen Ian, but it will be like 10 different classes of ship this is so big for you well not really because it, it's i'm only letting it go because <laughs> i got what i want <laughs> which is a bad lesson to teach a child <laughs> um <laughs> but i loved it it was it was the perfect welcome back and if that doesn't hook you into watching episode two at least I don't know what else would. I think you know, it's pretty much perfect. They've done so many. This was a really clever start. I'm really, really excited. I even liked some of the outfit upgrades and the mm -hmm. com badge upgrades. You know, mm -hmm. they've got this really sleek looking com badge. It's got this sort of dark two sort of column things. Mm. And then the the outline of the Delta. I is, love it so It much. just looks really sleek. But then it shifts again when the timeline changes. Mm -hmm, to a totally to different To something one. completely different. Which was very, very interesting. What I love about um, the the main Delta that we see, that badge, is that it's um it's actually used in Voyager. So it's a modified version of that. So it's even consistent with some of the Voyager episodes that jumped further in time. So it's just all of the everything all of the designs are so deliberate and even the uniform is a oh, merger yeah. of Kirk's flappy uniform yeah. and the TNG one. So oh, oh, man. It's so good. I I, I am it. blown I away. It by the costuming they nail it every time and even agnes's new costume her yeah. cutout mm -hmm. of hers like i don't know how they get to stay that way where no. it doesn't flop open it's probably like <laughs> tape of some kind yeah. so like when you get up in the morning and you tape. put on that yeah. you have to tit tape it mm -hmm. so that it doesn't bet. but it looks so unique so badass. and, and creative mm -hmm. um although i'm still confused about agnes but me too we'll just we'll get the there the drunk angle was very interesting but i guess it's She's still dealing with a lot of trauma and alcohol is how she's dealing with it. I guess that's pretty 
self-explanatory. But how does she suddenly know how to extrapolate information about a weight? No, she's like a freaking genius. Oh, she is a genius. Okay, all right, all right. She, is, she bridges she's the gap. She's a soji. Yeah, she bridges the gap between um, what um, Maddox can do and what Soong had already done with Data. She bridges that okay. gap. and okay. She's as much to... Um, to she can take as much credit for Soji and Data as, as anyone right, else can. Right, But that to me would be like creating synth life and sort of like not necessarily being able to do the things that I see her do. But you're not, I mean, it's not wrong. She's just fucking genius. Mm -hmm. She's a torture genius. The more I think about it, the more similar she is to Data's creator who mm. was batshit bonkers, un unhinged. I kind of want to see her go unhinged. I like, think we will. I don't... <laughs> I hope so because she plays a really great unhinged character. She does, yeah, because she goes from like really innocent and almost like fluffy and ineffectual to yeah, I'm going to murder a man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's all looking pretty bad. The queen is fucking shut up and doing things. And how did you think um, about what do you think about the queen's look? Um, there's there's a reason for everything. I wanted to just see the queen in all her all of her glory so i'm gonna actually save that for his instance because okay, that's one okay. of my big resistances okay, okay, okay. um she's tearing shit up on the stargazer seven opens fire you seven. badass everybody follows oh, suit yeah again no we'll, one we'll listens to the cat okay, 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 okay. yeah that's why i have a big one um eventually it is too risky to allow the queen to take over the entire fleet and even if that's not what she's doing it's too risky so they do the standard let's destroy the ship blow up the damn ship captain um and they set the auto destruct the explosion it seems so to begin with i assumed that this was a cause and effect thing like the episode right. where the explosion has caused a time loop and it's chucked them back in time but it seems that q has plucked them out of time and, and set them somewhere and set them somewhere yeah. um i have more thoughts about that but that's probably predictions but i loved Q. I was interested to see how they would do the flash, and they've updated the Q flash beautifully. It looks gorgeous. Um, the de aging was on screen just short enough to work. I liked <laughs> I think it. If it had been on there any longer, I think it would have started to Listen, fall apart. I but know they the did a great job. De aging can be awful sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I I super get that. I think they nailed but it, it though. Still blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Like um, Skywalker. Well, uh, and, in other TV uh -huh. shows, like yeah. seeing people who are like de-aged, mm -hmm. it's... Oh, it's it's astonishing. If it's you have an unlimited budget, it's... What, yeah. yeah, and you can do it really, really well, mm -hmm. of course, of course. Mm -hmm. But it's also scary, because you're like, how did you just pull that face out of, like... So scary. It's so scary. So, so scary. But I thought that they did a really good job, because as soon as it was like the cue that we remember, mm -hmm. it was exciting, and then... It's the same thing that we saw with Guinan yeah, or anything else. It's, or it's just, like, oh, oh I'll here. catch up. <laughs> and I love that because I didn't want him to just turn up because it is too convenient, isn't it? Um, too convenient that everyone's older and there's no explanation. Um, I, I think the way they did it was beautiful. And it's we're not un entitled to an explanation for anything, but it, it definitely helps my brain. <laughs> they really had to do a lot of we're just going to have to scoot past a lot of this. Mm -hmm. so we're going to have to say a couple lines to justify that. Yeah. But there's enough that they're setting up for the start of what we're going to be facing mm -hmm. this series. I wonder how quickly we'll get back to, like, are we going to be revisiting the same issue in different ways? Like in the episode, the, what was it called again? Which one? The one where they just go back in time and the time. Oh, cause and effect. Yeah. yeah. Is it going to be like cause and effect where we're going back? Or is it going to be like run this new timeline down and see which one you prefer? Do you prefer to sacrifice yourself? Or are you going to go with this one? And I think that's your prediction. Yeah. That you're yeah I've got some interesting mm -hmm. thoughts about that. Definitely. Um, it was quite funny when we saw the, El when we saw Elnor get a big, um, like, Elnor, welcome to the Academy. Because just before the episode started, <laughs> Danae was listing, huh, I wonder where this person is. I wonder where that person is. I wonder where that person is. Lists everyone and is like, Who am that's I missing? everyone, isn't it? Who am I missing? And I'm like, fucking Elnor, <laughs> <laughs> which is so like on brand. <laughs> so it was funny when he gets a big Elnor moment, me and mm -hmm. Danae are like, uh-huh, yeah, okay, we're now going to acknowledge he exists. Um, yeah, I think we've touched on everything from the episode. For final thoughts, for me... It sets up everything so beautifully. It may not be exploring things we necessarily are interested in in terms of relationships and love and stuff like that, but it so confidently sets up its story, its threads. There's enough trickled through 
the I didn't feel like bored. I didn't feel like the pacing was off. There's just enough short flashbacks to Picard's youth, which tell us we're mm-hmm. going to be exploring that, mm-hmm. reconnecting with him now, mm-hmm. where everyone else is. It is in 50 minutes, they did a great job of telling us where we are and where we're going over the next 20 oh, episodes. Yeah. And it's peppered with visual things that let you know that there is these fragmented realities. Mm. Like when uh, after the Q kind of snap or whatever mm-hmm. slash the ship explodes, whatever kind of happens, because mm-hmm. it's an it's a clever overlay, mm-hmm. right? It of, is. Did it the ship either. explode or, you know, mm-hmm. like we don't know. But in that moment when it flashes and Picard is now back in this greenhouse, it cuts to like this moment of his face being reflected off of multiple mirrors yeah. or multiple pieces of glass which is just a beautiful way to kind of show the audience that this is a reflection moment this is a fractured moment and that there's a lot of different outcomes it's just a really interesting visual and then it pans up yeah. and there's these hexagonal shapes mm-hmm. over which probably tells us that we're n- not where we think we are there's a shield of there's some something. sort uh-huh and i think that Predictions. Sorry, predictions. I'm going to write that down really right quick. Um, but there's all these like really beautiful little um, like winks and nods. And to me, it's not just like a fan service. It's it's a new story mixed mm-hmm. with old story. But there's also this beautiful like imagery that they're doing. So they've got a really good team, I think, of uh, behind the scenes on this they one. They know how to tell a story. I'm really excited mm-hmm. to see what happens next. The other, um, the other just thing on the mirror thing really quickly is the shattered mirror thing there's loads and loads of episodes set in a mirror universe and they can kind of jump backwards and forwards ds9 did it a lot and this is an alternate timeline where um humans are evil and they've teamed up with all of the bad guys and the original series kirk um kirk ship did it as well and all of the episodes have something to do with mirror so the first one is called mirror mirror there's another one called shattered mirror there's Mm. alice through the looking glass so the idea of mirrors and alternate universes has been all the way through star trek so i i love that there's there's nods to that as well it's yeah so good. <laughs> the symbol the symbology of metaphors are so good <laughs> um Final i do thoughts. have questions before we go on to the resistance just it. a couple of things that mm-hmm. i wasn't really sure about i got did something you, to say <laughs> did you know who the painting was of in the end was it of Picard? Was Just it Picard. of his brother? Was it of his no, no, no. dad? Definitely Picard. Okay. Definitely, definitely Picard. Okay. So that and is it, was a... just a, it was just one he didn't remember there being painted. Well, he's in a different timeline now, isn't he? Yeah. So I, his badge is, is different or exactly. whatever? Exactly. Okay. So he, this is, I, he's some, quickly into predictions, but he's some sort of military leader or dictator or he has some kind of evil history because that looks like a very Napoleonic it I'm going to kick some butt picture. It does. So yeah, it's definitely him. But I wasn't sure if that was referencing something No, else. nothing that okay, we know. Okay. That is okay. firmly in an alternate timeline. Okay. Um, the Queen says, look up in the quote-unquote mm. mother's voice, right? Mm-hmm. Can the Borg assimilate your memories and then, like, fuck with you Well, like they, that? She already has the memories because right, they assimilated Right, that's yeah. what I'm asking. So does, oh, like, yeah, do totally. you think that she was, like, pulling something oh, from his... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, totally. That's how totally I interpreted that, that, too. I just wasn't yeah, really totally. sure. Um, the other, and I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, the other thing about Look Up and the Shattering Glass is that when he lost the Enterprise D, the the roof of the bridge is made out of, obviously, really strong space glass, but that shatters. And as soon as that shatters, you're all sucked out into space, and mm-hmm. you're. it's very symbolic of this protective bubble, and if that shatters, you're dead, you're explo- uh, exposed. So there's a lot of how home protects you and, and keeps you safe in this bubble. Um, but you need to keep an eye on it for crap. Ooh, Ooh. that's deep. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, with that, it is time to head to engineering for Res Instances Futile on what is a perfect episode of television. Let's see how this goes. Warning, warp core collapse in 10 seconds. This is the part of the show where we re-engage our sin brains, but we won't need to for this because it's perfect. Remind ourselves that no TV show is without sin apart from this episode, even our <laughs> beloved Star Trek, but not including what we just watched. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was hard to sin this episode Okay, for let's me. head to the captain's ready room. <laughs> right? Great. Perfect. I honestly don't have... I would need to... This, is, this sums up me watching season one. I couldn't sin it. 
I was in it too much. A, yeah. I was having such a good that, that's time. That's a really cool feeling. I, I would have to rewatch this again, and I'm sure I would find more. I do have some things, but you you go first and well, the make first me one cry. I've already mentioned is that we're already doing 48 hours earlier, and I won't spend a lot of time on that. Mm-hmm. But I just, uh, I'm please don't do this the entire season 16 years ago 14 years ago 12 years ago 48 hours ago Uh it's like really please let's not do this again because it was in every single episode Mm -hmm. last season so i was immediately annoyed (laughs) yeah no i get it so i would send that as a rule like when i'm writing sin scripts if that happens i just say will you stop starting the movie with the end of your movie it's like you can't trust me to be patient and get to the end. It's like this false suspense thing of, oh my goodness, how did they get there? It mm-hmm. will never happen. It's like, well, of course they're going to get there because there's two days of shit that can happen, <laughs> you dicks. Um, I give it a pass because it's Star Trek. Um, so Seven of Nine, we didn't actually touch on Seven too much. Um, her new ship is La Serena. Um, some pirates are trying to take medical supplies from her. She has help. That just explains like what Seven is doing. Why doesn't she always have her gun on her? What is it doing on oh the my bridge? Gosh. My goodness, she was totally unarmed. Completely unarmed. And then she... I'm crewless. And, and to, to answer that question, she in the next scene after they transport the people who were trying to take the supplies <laughs> yep. away uh-huh. she casually like walks up and she's like oh there, there it is, is. <laughs> you little scamp <laughs> and then grabs her gun and like puts it on her hip and i had that too like mm-hmm. why would you ever be without it as you just seven wouldn't you wouldn't no. i mean it, it's fun to see her carrying around like a mario and luigi size <laughs> like <laughs> yeah whack-a-mole thing wrench yeah like a kind of busy now yeah mm. yeah the other thing i didn't like about that scene was that she had to activate this program to be a solid piece instead of a hologram. No, that's pretty Why standard. Why not always have him be solid? Well, what's because... The, what's, the, what's the downside to that? So he can't pass through things if he's solid. Okay, um, okay. It takes more power to make oh, them solid. okay, okay. Uh-huh. Um, and it will have a... So if he gets shot, it will have a physical effect on the hologram. It's not going to kill him, but it's going to kinetically push him backwards, put him okay. off balance. So uh, here's a question: sorry. Can he can he walk into someone and then become solid and explode uh-huh. them? <laughs> and they that that happens. That <gasps> has happened. No. Uh huh. A hologram does that to um, a character in Voyager. What? And it's not as devastating as it should have been. But he reaches into her chest uh... and then starts wiggling around with ah! things and like starts like squeezing her heart. <laughs> It should have straight up killed that character, 100%, but it it doesn't. But yeah, they they can absolutely do that. So he like made just the very, his like fingertips. Just his digits and then just, uh, but he's trying to kill her. And I'm like, dude, get in there and pull it out. Like you don't need to try hard. Like (laughs) you're going to fuck a person up. Holy shit, that's Uh dark. Okay. Holograms are fucked up. Glad we're talking about that. Mm -hmm, That wasn't gross. Um, Cigar on the bridge, question mark. I know it's not lit, but I, it's. I had the I same thought. Know. I had the same thought. Like this makes sense for somebody who has like a rogue ship, but you're a captain of. Mm-hmm. He did have a lighter too, and I you could see him kind of fidgeting with it whenever you know things he were getting that shit up. Yeah, he really wants to when he gets stressed uh-huh. out, but you don't see him light it, and I don't no. think it's ever lit. And good because it all his cigar almost Goodness. dropped out of his mouth whenever the Borg <laughs> ship started coming yeah, through, which I thought was I such a cool it. moment. It I'm great. glad it didn't fall off because that would have been too though? much. Me too. I'm it would have been, been too much. Yeah, but too it was comical. Just enough that's like, yeah, oh, yeah, fuck. buddy, that's. Something bad's happening. I'm serious. I'll, I'll jump into that moment and just mm-hmm. in. Why are your shields not already up? Why, why are, are they you not are, always up? This is clearly a problem. So, why aren't you already concerned? It's standard. I'm going to get super nerdy. No, is, that's why you're here. Sta- that's me. <laughs> it's standard diplomatic procedure to go into these situations. Shields down. <sighs> that's stupid. No yellow alert. Just... Uh-huh. Olive Branch, we are a, we are a peaceful people. That can destroy you. <laughs> if we want If you go to. in with shields, it's setting the wrong term. It's like ter- Is it though? It is. It's like turning what? up to actual negotiations with like a shield and sword. You're like, yeah, no, no, no. I'm totally here to talk about peace with my big fuck off shield. But as soon as they know it's the Borg, it shields up. But yeah, they think it's a diplomatic mission up until that point. Which makes them stupid. Because I get it. yeah. All the all the the words coming through. That's so Borg. Seven's like on mm-hmm. edge. Mm-hmm. Every there's. Let's also send the fact. Why would you send Picard by himself without any other Starfleet present to make decisions? Like there's a fucking 
massive rift in space and time yeah, that important. looks Borg-esque and sounds mm-hmm. like Borg, and you're going to send old Picard in Gollum body to just <laughs> go handle this on his own? Yeah, because I know he's Picard is specifically asked for, but there should still be like a diplomatic there should crew be with him. A whole bunch of people. Yeah. Not this crew of like recently back together, one yeah. of them fucking drunk. <sighs> one of them wanting to turns kill up the way queen. Later. Yeah. What why are there not so many more people invested in this very close, very real potential threat? Mm-hmm. That really bugged me too. I mean, also, it sets off the whole thing, but Yeah. Also, why park so close to it when you know the Bozeman exactly. is just gonna come out? And destroy your nacelle and then put you in a time loop. Also, when you say, sin after sin after sin, when you tell them, stop trying to send somebody onto the ship or I'll shoot. And then you don't shoot. (laughs) Why aren't you doing the thing you said you were going to do? Like, follow through. I get it. Or don't threaten. Or don't threaten. Mm -hmm. I'm learning this with raising a child. You know, like. Yeah, you got to follow through. You have to follow through. If you say something asinine, Mm -hmm. you know what? You're just going to have to follow through on it because Mm -hmm. they need to learn that what you say matters. matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so way to go, cigar smoking captain (laughs) who doesn't do anything he says. Maybe this is why your crew doesn't listen to you when you tell him to stop shooting. That's my next (gasps) sin. My goodness. A. Everybody fires as soon as Seven does. And I'm like, why is she taking... Uh, no, Immediately, she should be taken lead? off the, the bridge. Yeah, you should be shooting her, not your guest, which I know is doing some tentacle things, but still. Um, and Rios doesn't even attempt to tell them to stop firing. And then when he does, they don't listen. They it's don't like, listen. This is your, your first command is not going well, my friend. No, it looks like a big debacle. And what a horrible, what a horrible place to fumble with the Queen oh of the goodness. Borg... In all of her evil glory. Evil. Standing before you with these like octo tentacles <sighs> popping out yeah. and absorbing your energy. It's, it was a bad moment to a bad call. And by the time that he's like, let's fire on the ship. Too late. And it's it's not what Picard would have done had Picard been captain. And I don't know. It just it didn't set Rios up very in a, in a very good light, to be honest. No. Um, how do you feel about uh, the self-destruction code 000 Picard 0? How does that make you feel? Not the first time it's appeared. <laughs> oh, God. We talk about, like, passwords for yeah, your smartphone uh-huh. or passwords for anything in general. The password is self-destruct. <laughs> the Fuck. password is just... But the S is the money sign. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, wait a second. So, <laughs> to destroy the ship, somebody uh-huh. has to have your vocal, mm-hmm. which can be faked, mm-hmm. By and data. just go zero, 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 Picard zero. That's it. Um, wow. Pretty much. Wow. Uh huh. Um, I, I have concerns. It's not the dumbest one I've seen. The dumbest one I think was in um, the search for Spock, where Kirk. I think the code is like zero zero six or something like that. It's it's so dumb, and it changes so much. Whether you need two voices or you need three voices or what. Apparently, an admiral can just a retired admiral can just overrule all of that. And there should be more. There should there be more should before be you something. hit the order destruct. Yeah. And mm-hmm. why is it Picard and not Rios's? Off. It's Rios's ship. Why no, isn't he no, no, no. the one to Picard doing is it? on the ship. It's his. <laughs> <laughs> By default, it is now his ship. I also thought that it would be fun to sin the moment when um Seven says, Oh no, no, I think it was when they're talking about like whether to trust the the Borg ship or or whatever was coming through or not. And I think maybe Agnes says we could be putting a bullet into an ally. Mm. And I just thought, how many centuries have passed since bullets were used? Yeah, huh? like, and what, that's your reference. Yeah. That was a good point, yeah. Like, wouldn't it be like... We could be torpedoing w- an ally or We could be phasering, phasering them. Or, yeah. or energy... Like, there would be another Vaporizing. term. yeah. But, I no, mean, bullet right. works, but still. Um, I am still shocked about how willing Picard was to open diplomatic talks. Me too. And in person, why does he need to be in person? He doesn't. He doesn't. I, I get that it's for the plot. Oh, yeah, But yeah, it's yeah, yeah. just such a... That's one of those moments in the show I had to really just go, oh, mm-hmm. I have to go with it here. Because they're like, you can go in person and talk to this very dangerous thing. Now, it was only a few years ago that we rejected you in all forms. Mm-hmm. And you made very questionable decisions. Yeah. But we want you to go in person. And it would have been really powerful if Picard and Seven had been the ones that were saying, nope, we do not trust the Borg. They are definitely up to no good. This is a bad juju move. 
and then Rios overalls them and says, "Well, I'm Starfleet. This is my ship. Yeah, but this is what we're doing." He has. He's so impotent. Yeah. In, oh, he's in casual. This. Yeah, so casual. There is this also casualness. This is another sin that I have with Agnes, where like when the queen shows up. Now maybe it's because that's she's new. drunk. Yeah, just that's new. <laughs> it's like, like yeah, we're all thinking it. But is it new? What that is? No, that's very new. And I'm almost glad she said it because we're all most of us are thinking it because the Borg don't decorate, and that was a very ceremonial garb that she had on. The queen yeah. is usually just. Body, body and thing and then the head kind of slips into this suit thing and she's right. downloaded into the body but then, and she's then she teleporting has a force field. out of her ship though so well, yeah, maybe she, she has, has a force to... field and stuff so i yeah. that is for some reason obscuring her identity and i don't know why it was very deliberate <laughs> prediction sorry <laughs> oh my god your mind is blown wait <laughs> no wait what <laughs> Sorry, you broke my brain a bit. It's like when I told you that Rios had killed himself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's better. That's even better than what happens. No, okay. no, you're right. It's being it's being obscured for a reason. It is. Yeah. Be mo- no, that doesn't make any... Never mind. Mm. Sorry, you got me thinking. I have one last sin, okay. and it was Elorians age very slowly and kind of like, <laughs> yeah, as long as we want to. Yeah. That is the most <laughs> plottiest... MacGuffin I have ever fucking heard and uh, I know I know it has to be done and Picard just got, can't go in there and say fuck you look old yeah no no she, was, it has to come from her there were so many cheeky moments where it's like we have to address aging <laughs> while also not yeah. spending too much time on it like Picard is even walking through the ship when he first gets on the ship and says everything looks uh, <laughs> everything looks younger uh, or Everyone gets these new bodies uh, yeah. and look myself. younger, unlike like, me. You had a chance yes. to have a younger body. Yeah. So you don't get to see that. No. Not that I mean, you were does. dead, but okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, Right. That's all that I had. Did you have any more for, for engineering? Uh, this is just a stupid one, and it's Go a silly it. one, and it's a great one to end on. I mean, I just don't understand why people are still spending so much time curling their hair. It's just, it's everywhere. It's it beautiful. Agnes is curling her hair and but Seven is curling her hair. What if you can just snap your fingers and the computer does it? And it's not spending time at all. It's just zzzzed and it's done. Okay, now I want curly hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> time. It's time. all about time. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not wrong. You're mm-hmm. really, really not. It's about relationships mm-hmm. and time. People are still popping in and out with transporters and it could kill people. Um, that's where I'll oh, leave that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. It's like, bzzzt, bzzzt, bzzzt. You that moment, you know, okay, let's go, let's go there really quickly. So that moment, whenever like the, the, the people have all um, graduated and they're getting their assignments and yeah. this lady is just kind of standing in this open hallway area and she's like, so-and-so, you're going to so-and-so ship and they nod and they turn and they walk through the what? teleporter and they just teleport out. Mm-hmm. And it's the same things that were in the first one that we send in season one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's still frustrating and annoying. But also that's how you get your assignment. Is going to someone who's just <laughs> yelling out in the middle of a corridor. Like, wouldn't you be, like, updated yeah. some Excelsior, other way? Stargazer. Like, <laughs> like, can you not argue? Like, or, or, like, you're like, oh, so where did you get stationed? You know, I don't know. I didn't get to the hallway in time yeah. to learn about my assignment. <laughs> it wasn't sent to me on a document on a uh-huh. computer system somewhere. It would be an email or something, wouldn't something. it? Something. Yeah. And then in the next scene, Elnor's standing there and gets the book from Picard. Mm-hmm. And over the audio, or over the announcements, you hear, Elnor, please report to da 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 and it tells no, like left. what ship mm-hmm. like so Elnor gets to hear it over the announcement mm-hmm. but everybody else had to go hear it from this lady who's just yelling yeah. in the corridor handing out the Hogwarts hats <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway. what a house you're in uh-huh. oh brilliant Elnor would be Hufflepuff I think probably almost certainly yeah yeah um, okay let's head to our final stop which is the captain's ready room Welcome to the Captain's Ready Room, where we hear our ambassadors and mine predictions for the rest of the season and bask in our cue-like glory <laughs> if anything we have previously predicted has come true. This is going to be tricky because we have to keep track of these things for the both of us. Um, I am going to have, yeah, I'll do two documents and we'll yeah. have like some competing things and there'll be a prize at the end. So we have a prediction that just popped out of my mouth that the Borg is actually Picard's mother. I know we're just going to put uh, that one down gonna for silliness. We're just going to put it in. We'll we're slap gonna, it in. That one's going to go in there. That's just... the, the Rios is a whole hologram <laughs> yeah. of the, of the yeah, season exactly um, man that would be so fucked but up for so many reasons what do you think is behind yeah it would be what do you think is behind that the face um i think 
what would make sense to me is that that it's one of two things that either isn't the bald queen Mm -hmm. and they're hiding it Mm. or she is disfigured damaged injured and they don't want to show weakness you want to hear my other prediction Uh uh-huh it's seven oh no of course it is oh no that makes way more sense they're hi- there's a reason they're hiding it there's for a reason sure. that they're hiding it yeah and that would be shocking wouldn't it It would be really shocking it could be that they can reassimilate her face through using other things somehow oh, of course and Technology. she's already been the queen because she mm-hmm. went into queen mode last maybe they time. cloned her and mm-hmm. imprinted yeah yeah that's mm-hmm. interesting or it's mm, could be could be seven's mum could be Seven's oh. mum. That makes sense because they 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 were assimilated. Said, yeah, yeah. And we have seen them as Borg. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's interesting. <gasps> it's interesting. Beverly. <laughs> oh my! Do you know how fucked up that would be? My goodness. Ugh. So that that's my prediction. For there's definitely something being hidden. Mm-hmm. I like all of those those answers. Um. It's got to be someone we know because we'll be back at this yeah. moment. Yeah, and, for sure. And they will be for unmasked. Sure. Speaking of being back in this moment, another prediction I have mm-hmm. is that the ship isn't exploded, which I kind of alluded to in the show already, mm-hmm. but it's not actually an exploded ship. There's still something to happen in that moment that hasn't happened yet. Mm-hmm. And one of the options is that because their shield was penetrated already, that the other ships in the area could teleport them all out somehow. So yeah, that would make it sense. It could still explode. That could totally happen. And it could be like, a, oh no, it did explode. But, but they all get beamed onto all... the Enterprise and I get to see the Enterprise again. Oh. <gasps> There we go. Good prediction. Um, so I had one. There's one of two things that's happening in that moment. Either the explosion has sent them into this alternate timeline, and just because time travel can do that and mm-hmm. whatever, and the explosion is the trigger, or and this is the one I'm really going with is that that is the end of that timeline. So the Borg. Um, oh, ass- this is where the Borg rule actually and they assimilate overtake oh, the um, Federation, and that is the end of the Alpha Quadrant as we know it. Oh my god! And so Q steps in, and he's just like, "Well, game over, but choose your own adventure. I'm not ready for the game to be finished. Here's another option. Now, there's some sacrifices that you have to make, but you don't end up getting assimilated by the Borg. Whoa! And I think that's what Q is doing because that is oh so cute. God, that'd be it's so like, crazy. yeah, the game is over, but. I'm not ready. My toys need to carry on playing. Um, I think that is so on brand for Q. Um, but I also, I think it's going to have the same ending of actually, no, that's not the end. But you need to make this decision as if you think it is the end. Right. Or else that's going to affect the experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's my, that's my big prediction for the overall season about where it will go. Here's an important prediction. I have a question. Mm-hmm. How many times do you think we're going to see Agnes's chin quiver? In season two, because we didn't see it in episode one. No, I think twice per episode going forward. Okay, I just <laughs> yeah, that's where that's my prediction for that. Put it in the log. Um, I had a prediction that was immediately disproven. I <laughs> yeah, it sucks. I when I heard the distress signal, my actual first first thing was because they said this is a race that can control space and time. I really hoped that it was the Q continuum that were asking to join the Federation. Because the Borg were a threat to them somehow. Oh, whoa. That would have been so freaking epic. Um, and it, somehow the Borg have been silent because they've been working on a way to break through to the continuum and to elevate themselves to mm. their level. Um, and the Q are now in trouble and they need help. Whoa. Still something that... <laughs> we still don't really know what's going to be. <laughs> I, would, I would love that to be true, but... Um, it, it would put a bit of clarity onto because the Q are gods, like they yeah. can do anything. So it's like, why don't they do anything? Like they are so they're just bored. They just chill out and do nothing with all of that power. Um, but really that's always play. the problem when you create a being that powerful. When they uh, play, they they play with uh, the the minds of human plebeians yeah. who question things. There was something that Picard said to all the students. He said. What weighs on us is what we could have done, mm-hmm. not what we did, mm-hmm. which is the entire point of what's going to be happening in season two, right? Of like, course, yeah. This reflection, mm-hmm. not only of love, but it's on decisions that you make and how they impact. And so with a Q-like character, they can easily, mm-hmm. you know, do that, where yeah. they have the knowledge that their decisions led to one thing, but what's going to weigh on them is what they did something different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I love it. They're going to mess it, with it, their minds. Yeah, they are. You're not wrong. Um, yeah, I called it with this being about Picard and his love story. It you was one, did. Of, one of the even things. Even his that, childhood, you've mm-hmm. mentioned that. Of course, that was 
Was that in the previews? Uh, no. Not the child. Not the child. Was a child. I didn't know that was Picard, but it looks like that that child is Picard now from the trailer. Cap. It was a little flat cap. Mm-hmm. How do we know he's English if he doesn't have a flat cap? That's right. Um, I've only kind of got one other big prediction, and that's that when they, the planet that they're on now, he's on Earth, but there's been a disaster. So that shield that's above the the house is because earth is barely livable so mm. maybe the sun has gone supernova or there's a solar oh, flare or something and there's only little bubbles where earth can be inhabitable and maybe that's changed the politics of the federation so maybe earth had to go militant to protect themselves and maybe they had to stop doing exploration much earlier and become more about what well, we need places for our people to breathe so we're going to have right. to colonize some places and be really militant man that's interesting i i wondered if it was about um being inside of the hollow like a holodeck or something like you're kind of seeing but you don't usually see no, the exterior of it like when you usually. go into the holodeck you don't you're in. yeah you're in it and you don't see the mm-hmm. exterior parts of it but it reminded me of mm-hmm. of that too it was like oh what if this is like a recreation of his home someplace and mm-hmm. not actually his home yeah. but i think yours is probably more accurate we'll find out we will find out um any other big predictions nope no i think that's it they've given us some 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 stuff to go for um yeah man i'm so excited it's good to be back um it's it's good to dive in i can't wait for next week's episode it's so exciting is it exciting because you know part way through this episode you literally stopped the show Mm -hmm. to have a conversation about tea with aaron so did i (laughs) can't Oh, no, yeah, but that's because he was just like, Earl Grey tea is the bad tea. And I had to explain, no, <laughs> it's not. It's not the bad tea because Picard likes it. Uh huh. But I don't like flavoured teas other than Earl Grey. And I had to train myself to like Earl Grey because my uh-huh. captain likes it. Mm-hmm. And that was yeah, so that important. Was important. You had to stop the show to, to talk about it. Yes. So are you sure you're excited about this? Because yes. if you can stop the show to talk about tea. Well, if if the, the Americans need to be put right. They, if, <laughs> If I'm not going to do it, who the hell will? Good point. Okay. (laughs) Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, It's Make It So from me. And Kelisef from me. Oh, you had one ready. What does that mean? Uh, That's what, Loris? What's her name? Oh, Laris. Laris. She says something that means seize the day for we know nothing of tomorrow, but I only had a chance to write down the very last few words, which likely just means tomorrow. So it's tomorrow from me. (laughs) It's tomorrow from Danae. And as always, live long in Hotspur. Thanks for listening. Want to connect with the show? Our hailing frequencies are always open through captainspod at cinemasins.com. Like, comment, and subscribe on your podcast player of choice, and be sure to visit cinemasins.com. <coughs> ah, me, me. Are we recording? No, yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't know you were recording. Are you out there? Hey, Lizzie, you're so me. <laughs> So that that looks like a lot. Leave it to you within ten seconds. You broke it. Just to like unscrew the microphone. <laughs> to, I think I never this really sounds loud. Hey, you should talk into the microphone. I I am taking my fucking notes. <laughs> it is this last two weeks has been a beautiful break. It has been no I've missed. Oh no, the look on her eyes. The look on her eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> test, holy test, test. Holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Uh, uh, uh. You, your, 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 the inertial dampeners are on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the seat. Man, I, if we ever become super wealthy <laughs> podcasters. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I I want to upgrade the seats in this studio so badly. Yeah, Aaron Dicer, you need to upgrade <laughs> your seats. You need to you need to not just give us a studio to record in. You need to give us comfortable seating as well. Comfortable seating and seats that don't make a ton of noise. Come on. Coffee. I've left my coffee outside. Computer. Are you gonna go get your? But yeah, I'm gonna go get my coffee. Of course I am. Get, of course I am. Okay, well then, will you bring my tea? <laughs> Oh dear! Now I re- I need to move this to Why? be comfortable. Okay, where do you want? Mm-mm. No, no, no. Yes, yes. There. Yeah. Where do you want it? Where do you want to sit? Like, how do you want to sit? I I think I want to sit like this. Okay, so here's where I you can grab the arm. 
Uh huh. And then uh -huh. this right here, you can turn. Swivel that. So that's the bit that I want to swivel. Yeah. That's. Is it not? It's Mine might be looser. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Ian! What? I wasn't laughing at that. Really? <laughs> I wasn't laughing at that. Really? Is it nice to be back in the ambassador's chair? Where would the ambassador's chair be on the bridge? Oh, that's a really good question. Because on TNG, you've got Picard in the front as you're looking stage onwards. Riker on the left. What are you laughing at? Riker on the left. Um, Deanna will be like to Picard's right and then there's these like little perches that are next to that that mm -hmm. sometimes Beverly will, will perch on mm -hmm. yeah mine is uh, something that on occasion will descend from the ceiling directly in that's front of Picard epic. that's why I was giggling because I was just saying like here comes the ambassador and it's just like a <laughs> <laughs> like a lower <laughs> I don't know. I don't think the ambassador should be on the bridge. They're always on the bridge. They're always on the bridge fucking with things. Like, genuinely, in any episode that there's an ambassador, Picard will absolutely say the words, This is my ship, ambassador. Really? Mm hmm. Because he'll be like, I outrank you. Not on this ship. Wow. Um, and if the ambassador tries to like take over, Worf will do like his arms crossed thing and be like, You nah. never want to see that. Nah. No, I never want to see that. Okay, so, so then I should not have a chair. I should be able to free roam mm -hmm. so that I can fuck with things, you know, better. That is exactly so, what happens in every ambassador episode. That's good. Well, I I, I am an ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. True, deep down inside. You didn't even realize it. I didn't, but you did. I did. I could see it. That's why I gave you the title. I was like, if there's one person that's going to fuck with my ship, <laughs> it's her. Let's make her ambassador. <laughs> You've watched some TNG. I have watched TNG. Like... With you! We started with... Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can mm -hmm, remember. Mm -hmm. It was your favorite episode was the one we started with. Yeah. And in this episode... I don't know if anyone's seen it, so I'll just describe it to you. Okay, people. You have a timer to guess which episode it is. Within the first five seconds on screen. I don't know if it was actually five seconds. Ten but within, words. <laughs> the Enterprise explodes. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was the episode where... They're stuck in some kind of a time loop or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. And it results in like a ship coming out of a time space continuum portal. Yep. And clipping their nacelle. Yes. Ah! Oh my God. I am so excited right now. You're saying all of the words. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> and when that happens, it causes a warp core breach mm -hmm. and then and they can't get off. And so Picard is like, abandoned ship. And there's echoes. Oh, hell, it's about yeah, then they're all shaking in their seats and then it explodes. And then there's these echoes of every time that the time loop starts or when it gets like intense that's sent back into the loop. Mm -hmm. And so people on the ship kind of become aware that they're in this cyclical moment. Mm -hmm. And in this episode, they play with the camera angles really interestingly, which I noticed, but you had more like deep perspective of because they One had like were playing things. with it. Yeah, it's one of the. They have this formula, um, especially in the 90s. A lot of TV shows had a very similar formula of how things had to be shot, etc. And they didn't want to, with this time loop episode, they didn't want to just replay the same scene four times, which they could have technically done and just tweaked a few things. So they reshot it every time. But you've got like Dutch angles, you've got angles that are coming down from the ceiling. You just see bits of the ship that you've never seen before and just really interesting shots. Um, one was, of the many reasons it's my favorite. It was also really cool to watch because even though you're repeating the same kind of scene essentially over and over and over mm -hmm. again, there's they found different ways to not only shoot it visually, but different ways to kind of shift the focus of the camera so that you're looking at it from someone else's perspective. Mm. And then as the episode goes on, the camera angles get almost more and more intense. As yeah, like the, absolutely. They, they built tension really well with it. Mm. I don't know. It was an example of why TNG was really exciting for me. It was just really fun to start off with seeing everybody together playing poker. And then there was a mystery to solve. And yeah. then of course, you, we were watching the Enterprise explode over and over again, which just like I'd never seen that before. So it was no. very alarming. I wish I could have rec I'd, I'd recorded Danae's reaction. Like, what the shit? What? <laughs> they can't blow up the Enterprise. And I'm like, uh -huh. And then it happens again. And you're like, well, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I was very concerned. Uh, we also watched the one where they were doing this 
sweep of the ship to clean it up. What was yeah, that? so this what is was it called? the episode's the called Starship Mine, and it's a baryon sweep. Baryon sweep, yes. Yeah. So nothing living can be on the ship, and so the crew like they disembark. There's this strange party going on. There's this really fun dynamic with Data and all this <laughs> trying to learn small talk. But in that episode, Picard dons this like beautiful oh velvet outfit. like it was uh-huh. silk I think silk yeah 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 like the silk open chest <laughs> horseback riding outfit apparently and grabs his like equestrian saddle <laughs> and is gonna Beats go horseback riding and mm-hmm. then he ends up finding like this mystery happening on the ship and he has to like solve it and it was really interesting he straight up just murders people in this episode oh, yeah. this is his rambo die hard episode this it is die so hard cool. on the enterprise it's one of my favorites it as reminds well. you of like how badass picard is mm-hmm. because for as much of a um a diplomat as he is and how great he is with his words and mm. his strategy it's also really fun to see him just be like no you don't you can't yeah, don't, live. Don't fuck with my shit. You can't I'm live. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he, he just kills people. Please, choose to live. <laughs> it's one of the things that I struggled with growing up was remembering that Starfleet was the Navy. It is yeah. the military, essentially. Like, yeah. It isn't, their first mission isn't defense and protection. It is exploration. But it is a military thing. And you go through boot camp and training. So Picard has 30 years of military training, except, uh, espe- essentially. Um but that's one of my favorite things about TNG is that they don't do like the cop out things. Like he has to, he goes to Worf's quarters because he knows that there's going to be um, ammo in there. There's going to be oh, yeah, there's yeah, going to yeah. be a crossbow or something in there that Worf will have. He puts like dynamite together using chemicals. He sciences stuff. He sets a trap in ten forward because he knows that's the most forward part of the ship. That's where they'll end up. Um, he's just, he's thinking one, a million steps ahead Mm -hmm. without being, oh, you're, this is clearly written. You, there's no way anyone is that intelligent. Like all of it is believable. And Um, they wait in the story to to share those things too. Like at the right moment of the story where you're watching, wondering what's going on and you're fearful for Picard. But then when he just says a simple line, like you have to have a way off of the ship. So mm-hmm. I'm going to take that way off of the ship. Uh-huh. It's like, oh, he has been thinking all along. You know, uh-huh. I'm, I'm along for the ride in my moment to moment, but it's like, oh, if you think like Picard, you're thinking 10 steps ahead. So that was really fun. It's so good. And I think that you picked the right episodes for us to watch from TNG to kind of like remember the characters mm-hmm. going back into season two of Picard. Mm. I think one of the things I'm most excited about for this next Picard watch along that we're going to do is that you don't know what's going to happen. So I, me my favorite part, yeah. And the audience uh-huh. too are all experiencing like in the moment mm-hmm. revelations and experience. I'm I'm and stuff's going to blow my it. mind. I know it. I know it. <laughs> and I haven't I've watched the trailers but I haven't done any reading. Um so we'll just see what yeah, happens. Yeah, you're like avoiding Twitter and everything uh-huh. right now. Well, let's start the show and okay, okay, then okay, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll do that stuff. Um, are you really ready? Are you ready to start? Are you ready? Are you, ready? Are you, ready? Are you ready? <laughs> you okay there, Captain? I'm so ready. Do you need okay. me to no, take good. over? No. Mm-hmm. No. Ba- yeah. ba- 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 <laughs> Captain's pod, something Son of a... <laughs> <laughs> no, you go, do it. Uh, we Captain's already, pod. We already did this part, though. <laughs> we did. <laughs> okay. We did. <laughs> uh, nice. That could be our most repeated outtake, is burp and then nice. <laughs> <laughs>